Today we're looking at the Shinhan paints. What up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And today I want to share with you, so I got these Shinhan PWC uh, watercolor paints. Uh, this is a free sample. I got it off a local art store called My Art, and I just want to take a look at these. Originally, I planned on really heavily researching them and um, checking out the specific properties and things of that nature. But then I decided let's do a little unpacking and just take a look at all the paints that are here. Now, I'm a little confused, honestly. I took a look at Shinhan's website and it seems like they have basically three lines of watercolor paint. So they have the PWC, also called Extra Fine Artist Watercolor, which is this one. Okay, you can see it here, uh, the PWC. And then they have the Shinhan Professional Watercolor. Um, and then finally the Shami watercolor, which is uh, the student grade. So I'm not really sure what the difference is between the PWC and the professional uh, watercolor. It seems like both claim to be professional. So if you have any idea, you can leave that information in the comment below. Uh, I'll just read what they say. They say PWC, which is the one I got, uh, extra fine watercolor. Uh, watercolors is crafted with the highest quality pigments and the finest high grade gum arabic to enhance the clarity and depth of color. Sin single pigments have been used whenever possible. Uh, now with the, with the professional, it says carefully formulated to satisfy the needs of discerning artists. Uh, each consists of pure pigments. Okay, so I guess that could be one of the differences. Um, so with the PWC, they're not all necessarily a single pigment. Now, the PWC has 84 uh, paints and the, the professional one has 30. So there are more of these. Now, the, part of the reason why I'm confused is that I went on Amazon uh, because I just wanted to check out what they offer. And <laughs> they have a lot of the professional and I think some of the shami, the, the student grade, but I couldn't find a lot of these, the PWCs. I only found two sets. Both, by the way, don't ship to, uh, to here, um, to Israel, from what I could see, which is interesting, but you don't need that because these uh, are abundant in the, in the art store I visited. So in any case, we don't really need to order them off uh, online, but uh, in any case, I'm just curious to know why it seems to be less of these. Uh, they also don't have many reviews on Amazon. The, the ones that are the professional ones have more reviews. So I'm not really sure, but in any case, what we're gonna do now is change the angle and we're just gonna take a look at this set see the colors and I think what I'll do is kind of just show you what each one of those looks like. Um, maybe a few mixes and then I want to compare some of these to other paints I have. So for example there's the uh, Ultramarine here. I want to see what it looks like when compared to another brand's Ultramarine or something like this. I think it could be fun. Uh, so let me change the angle and we'll get started with looking at these. Okay so here's a better look at uh, the package. We have, I guess, some kind of a brochure thingy here, so I'm gonna try and grab it out. Uh, so we're gonna take a look. In terms of the package, it's really nice for a sample, I guess. Um, so there it is, from all sides. Uh, I know sometimes people like to see like the whole uh, details of the package. So, oh, that's really cool. So we've got the, the 84 colors I talked about the, uh, of the PWC, so very interesting. Um, some additional information so this will help us uh, later on to read what's on the tubes um, and I guess some more information about this particular one the PWC so this is basically the same thing as I read to you uh, on the website okay so let's take these out and just take a look at these we have all of their information on the tubes uh, really nice packaging I like the way this looks so let me show you so we've got three here. We've got the Van Dyke Brown, we've got the Ultramarine Deep, and finally the Permanent Red. Um, so let's just choose one and start with this one, the Ultramarine Deep. Okay, so here we go. We've got the Ultramarine Deep. Um, that's, I guess, the number in the brochure, 622 Series B Light Fastness 3. And I want to check out what these mean. So, uh, Light Fastness 3 is good, I guess. That's high degree of light fastness. Um, this one is transparent. <sighs> what else? Series B, that's the low price. So, not the lowest, but a low price. 
and I wonder, okay, so the pigment is PB29, which is uh, predictable for ultramarine deep. Um, let's take a look at the other ones. So what we've got here, this one is a Series A, so uh, that'll be a cheaper one. Light Fastness 3 as well, also transparent. Uh, the, pigment is, the pigment here is PR209. Uh, and finally, we've got uh, the uh, Van Dyke Brown. It's very interesting that they chose uh, to put like the, the blue and the red, but not a yellow. So in any case, Series B, Light Fastness 2, so this one's a little less Light Fast. Uh, which means a uh, normal degree of light fastness. Uh, this is what the brochure says. Um, and it, this one's also transparent. And the pigment is, I have no idea what that is, MBN Brown 8. Okay, so I quickly checked and this stands for Natural Brown 8. Okay, so interesting. I wasn't familiar with that one actually. Uh, so what I think I'll do is now uh, put some of these. I've got a piece of paper here. I'm going to put these here and we're just going to try them out and see what they look like. So this is always an interesting moment because you can't really know what the color is going to come out of the tube like. Sometimes they're very liquid, sometimes they're really crammed in there. Um, so let's give this one a try. So it opens really nicely, no weird leaks or uh, stuff like that. Um, I also like the shape of this. Uh, you can see here there's a gap here between the screwing mechanism, I guess, and the, uh, and the top part. Uh, because sometimes paint gets in here and then it's really hard to screw or unscrew the cap. Uh, so anyway, let's pour just a bit of that here. Just a tiny quantity. So that's the um, Ultramarine Deep, okay? That's what this one's called. Then we've got the permanent red, so let's see what this one will look like. And also opens really easily, that's very nice. And I like how they're a bit uh, pasty in terms of, they don't spill out too much, I guess. Um, don't spread out too much. And finally we have the Van Dyke Brown, which always reminds me of Bob Ross's video. So this one's a little more, uh, I guess, spilling out more easily. So let's put this one here. This one feels a little more liquid-like, but they are pretty similar. Uh, so now we've got all of them and I'm just going to try them out and see what they look like. Okay, so let's get started. I'm just going to pick up some of the paint and take a look at it. So uh, this one, and I may have even poured uh, too much. Uh, I'm using hot pressed paper uh, for this experiment. This is Saunders Waterford. Uh, and I must say that already this this feels like a very rich color to me. Um, this is the ultramarine deep. I think it's beautiful. Um, I will leave maybe room for uh, a comparison next to it. So this is really interesting. I didn't really know what to expect. I heard mixed uh, mixed reviews or mixed opinions about these ones, but. Uh, from what I can see now without testing too much or without trying, uh, this one looks beautiful. Let's try the permanent red a bit. So, um, oh, that's nice. So this reminds me a bit of the Perlin, uh, Perlin red or Perlin dark red. Uh, I was expecting it to be a little warmer, so more similar to the cadmium uh, or pyrrole scarlet, but it seems like it's really a, uh, a neutral red I guess it's it's really how shall I explain it it's a li it feels a little less orangey uh, if I compare it to the pyrrole scarlet or cadmium red uh, light but it definitely isn't magenta or something like that so that's very interesting uh, I really like this kind of red I find that it helps with producing uh, a good variety of, of um, purples and oranges, I think. So uh, let's try the brown now and see what this one looks like. I have no idea what to expect from this one. Uh, I'm not that big on browns, uh, generally speaking. Uh, I prefer to... Uh, I find that I just... Uh, it's not that I'm not a big fan of them. I, I just have a very hard time with, uh, with brown pigments. I find that they um, turn my paintings to dull and boring. So this one, it's funny. This feels like it even has a hint of kind of greenish. Uh, color to it. Let's try and pick up some more paint and see. Um, so this is a very nice one and uh, I love the way these feel on the hot press paper. Very smooth. 
um, and they all seem to be able to reach quite a dark value. Uh, I want to try out a little stronger value here with the with the uh, blue. So these are all really nice and I'm happy because I know that I have these accessible here in the local uh, art store so I'll definitely pick up more of those uh, if I need. Um, what I want to check out now is let's mix some of the uh, blue and red here and see what we get. So it's a very beautiful mixture actually. Um, I can see that it kind of it can move towards the more uh, purple, magenta, violet. This one actually reminds me a bit of the Carbazole Violet, Daniel Smith's one. Uh, let's push it a little more towards the red here. So a beautiful combination. These two can work really nicely together. Now uh, I wonder what will happen if I try and mix up some of the blue and the and the Van Dyke brown. I, I the Van Dyke brown really always reminds me of Bob Ross's um, show, I guess, uh, because it was a little more common in in oils. But with watercolor, I don't hear that name very often. But names don't have too much, too big of a meaning in, in any case, so it's just names. Uh, so this one is beautiful, it can, I think, it kind of reminds me of the um, French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber or Umber that I used to use with my Van Gogh set. Uh, so a really interesting combination, I think this these two work excellent together and these could be used for tree branches and things like this. Um, I think it's very suitable. Uh, let's try some of the brown together with the red. I'm gonna keep this video rather uh, short. Uh, I wanna uh, reserve or let's say yeah, reserve my my kind of verdict or final opinion or whatever after trying these for a while. Okay, so I don't wanna uh, come off the gate with with a strong opinion about these. Uh, because I'll have to try them out in some more paintings. Uh, let's try just blending some edges here. Uh, the paint, the, the way the paint is formulated can really affect uh, the qualities and how it interacts with the brush uh, in many cases. And what I can definitely say is that I don't identify anything that's annoying here. Meaning the blending uh, intuitively feels good. Um, it feels like it happens quite easily. There aren't any weird patterns being created. Uh, by the way, I want to zoom in a bit on the granulation here. It looks beautiful of the of the ultramarine and the the red. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. So check this beautiful pattern we got here. Uh, check it out. It's really good, I think. Um, I'm kind of having my times when I enjoy having a lot of granulation, and sometimes I prefer. Um, to have more a more of an even surface, I guess. But um, this one, I really like it, and maybe it will um, bring me back into a time of, of more interest in granulation. Uh, it also makes me wonder what this will look like, uh, maybe in a more abstract work. So to make use of that pattern specifically for an abstract uh, piece of art. So what I think I'll do now, while I'm still zoomed in, uh, is compare this one, the uh, Shinhan. Uh, French Ultramarine with the St. Petersburg one, which I also liked a lot. So let's just see what these two look like compared to one another. And I can definitely tell <laughs> there there is some difference. And, and again, uh, this is uh, Ultramarine, I think. And this one's Ultramarine Deep. I guess there are a few, could be a few differences with them. So this one feels a little more, um, a little happier, a little brighter, I guess. Uh, this one's a little darker inherently, at least that's what it looks like to me. Uh, especially because this one's starting to dry and this one is still wet, so you would expect the wet one to be darker. And I am using a similar uh, quantity or amount of pigment, I guess. So uh, this one looks like it has a little more red to it. So almost like the, uh, if you compare the, Fr the Daniel Smith's French Ultramarine and Ultramarine Deep, they look a little, or Ultramarine Blue rather, they look a little different. Uh, the French Ultramarine, if I'm not mistaken, uh, veers more towards the red, so it has a little more red to it. Uh, and if you look closely, and I know it's hard seeing this coming through the camera, uh, but if you look closely, it seems like this is a pure blue. Uh, let me try to zoom in just a little more so you can see this. 
So instead of zooming in, I decided to lift up the paper uh, to the camera um, because it was having a hard time focusing. Um, so you can see here pretty much the difference. This one's a little more blue and I feel like this one has a little more red to it. And here's just the, the uh, paint batches that I have here. Uh, this one does uh, is a bit softer and you can see how uh, if you look from the side here, let's see if I can get you to see this, uh, you can see how the brown lost some of its shape a little more uh, than the blue and the red, okay? So, um, still all of these three are beautiful, I think. Um, really having fun with them. Um, so I will, let's say I'll postpone my judgment. I don't want to just come out with a conclusion. So far these feel great and the combination of the blue and brown look beautiful. Um, and so I really like these so far. Uh, I'm gonna use them a little more, try them out a little, play around with them, but intuitively, just from the first impression that I get, I really see myself uh, getting more of these and, and using them uh, in the long run. I'll have to actually calculate if it, if it turns out to be uh, cheaper or not, and if it does, then yep, these <laughs> may very well be winners in terms of um, um, bang for the buck, let's say. Uh, so in any case, this is it. Let me change the angle and we can wrap up this video. So, I hope you enjoyed this quick demo review, first impression. I thought I'll make use of the divine light coming from the window and record the outro now without closing anything up. Uh, so these are, again, the three paints that I got. Um, I have here just some of the things I played around with. Um, these are, again, as a first impression, really fun, I really enjoyed uh, using them and I do see myself getting more. Uh, I will have to test them out, maybe do a few portraits with them and a few landscapes so that I know better what to do with them. Uh, I am looking for uh, to build a small, like really minimal palette of maybe five to six pigments, probably cool and warm versions of each primary and use those with no um, convenience mixtures, I guess. Uh, so these are good candidates for uh, an additional palette like this. Uh, and yeah, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Do not forget to subscribe here on YouTube. Follow me also on Instagram and Snapchat. You get to see more of the work in progress. Um, nice pictures showing everything. And I also uh, published a few more uh, episodes of the podcast. So if you haven't checked it out for a while, make sure you do. Uh, I think it really improves over time. And this is it. I want to thank you so much again for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope I can help and teach and entertain. And I will see you again in the next video.